What's up, guys? I'm back, and today is day four of the Quarantine Godzilla Marathon. Today, I'm going to be reviewing one of the most iconic Godzilla movies in the franchise, Mothra vs. Godzilla from 1964. So yeah, let's get into this review. <laughs> So we open up this movie with a typhoon that's raging across and the next day there's a lot of floods and we get to meet two main characters. One of his name is Ichi-chan, he's the male reporter and we we're, I don't think we're given the name of the female reporter so I'm just going to address her as the female reporter. And as they're taking pictures of you know the, the area, they uh, discover a strange rock and that, that plays a bigger role in, later in the movie. Then we go to a beach where a huge, huge egg is washed up on the beach and we get to meet a scientist by the name of Professor Miura, I think that's how you pronounce the name, and he's collecting samples from the egg. So then someone by the name of Mr. Kum Kumayama, I think that's how you pronounce the name, you know, it tells the scientist to know that he, his company has bought the egg, his company Happy Enterprises has bought the egg. And he says that he bought it from the fishermen because the fishermen state that since it was in their waters, it belongs to them. So yeah, Mr. Kumiyama buys the egg and he says that, you know, it's going to be a tourist attraction. So then we go to the hotel lobby and where Ichi-chan, the female reporter, and Professor Miura, again, I think, I don't know how, how you pronounce the name, I think that's how you pronounce it. You know, they see Mr. Kumiyama and he's in the lobby and they're trying to wonder, you know, why, you know, he's buying this egg. So then we cut to a scene in a hotel room where Mr. Ku Kumiyama and person by the name of Mr. Torahata and they're discussing, you know, they're talking about the egg. Then they're interrupted by a voice, they're two voices, and then they see two little girls, two little girls, like really, really tall, about this, about this tall, not really, really tall, really, really small, about, you know, about this tall. And, you know, they're saying, that, you know, please return our egg, please return the egg to us because, you know, it belongs to us. But they're not listening to them, they try to capture them, but the, the twin fairies, is what they're called, they get away. But then in the all, all the commotion, uh, Ichi-chan goes into into their room and you know he's wondering you know if there's a burglar if there's a burglar and you know they force him out of the room and then they go to it then you see Ichi-chan Dr. Mura and the female reporter in the forest and they're saying you know they're discussing you know you know what's going on so Ichi-chan states that he is the son of I believe it's Manzo Torahata it's the son of Manzo Torahata named Jiro, Jiro Torahata and he's a major power bro power broker in business but then they're interrupted by two tiny little voices and it's the twin fairies again. We learn that the twin fairies have come from Infant Island, an island in the South Pacific where they test, where they conducted a lot of nuclear tests. And the nuclear tests have turned Infant Island into a desolate place. You know, it's you know, a very bad place, you know, a lot of destruction. And that the typhoon, you know, the typhoon that they had the night before um, has caught, there was a lot of, so they caused a lot of mudslides on Infant Island and that caused Martha's egg to wash out to sea. And basically, the egg is the island native's last hope. Is their is their last hope? They say, you know, that once the the larva, you know, Martha's egg hatches, that the larva will come out and they're gonna return to Infant Island. Not before, you know, Martha, you know, the Martha larva may destroy the city. So there's a the Martha larva. If they hatch, they could destroy the city. So and yeah, they're asking um, Ichi-chan, the female reporter, and Professor Miura for help, and they accept. So the next day, they're discussing, they're talking to Mr. Kumayama and Mr. Torahata, and, you know, they're saying, you know, the please, you know, return the egg, please return the egg, and they're refusing. So what they actually did is they actually, they brought the twin fairies with them to help persuade them, you know, to give the egg back to them, but it's not working. They're not, they're, they're not, it's not working. The persuasion tactics are not working. So the uh, Mr. Kumayama and Mr. Torahata, you know, tried to buy the, the, the girls off of them. And it's not working. They're not, they're not they're not letting them buy the girls. Then all of a sudden, the fairies, you know, after they leave, the fairies disappear. And they, they're, they've they been told that they've headed back to Infant Island. So then we cut to a scene where uh, Ichi-chan and the female reporter are in Professor Miura's lab. And they're getting tested for radiation. And when they're wondering why, you know, when they're asking why, uh, the professor is saying that, you know, the rock that you guys found earlier had traces of radiation on it. So then the next scene, in the next scene, we cut to a construction site and they're conducting tests of radiation there. But as the female reporter is taking pictures of the area, she sees something moving. And then we get one of the most unique entrances in the Godzilla franchise, Godzilla popping out of the ground, which is really, really cool. So then Godzilla goes and destroys, you know, the city and we get a, you know, a sense of how clumsy Godzilla is. But the reason why is because 
the Godzilla suit, you know, the act, the suit actor, the suit actor's head was in Godzilla's neck, and there were little holes in the neck so the actor could see him breathe, but you couldn't see very well, so that's why Godzilla looks a little clumsy in this movie. There's also a scene where you see Godzilla's head catch fire, which is a really funny scene when you know when they're attacking, you know, the explosions, you know, Godzilla's head catches fire. You know, I couldn't imagine being in the suit when that happens. That that's crazy. But what I also really like about this movie is you get a sense of how indestructible Godzilla is. They're using missiles, they're using bombs, they're using electricity, they're using tanks, you know, they're using everything and you know, it's not working. So it's a really, really cool thing to see how strong Godzilla is. So then we cut to another scene where the news company is, you know, discussing, you know, how to defeat Godzilla. But then they come to a conclusion that they can get Mothra to come fight Godzilla. So what they do is Ichi-chan, the female reporter, and Professor Mira go to Infant Island, you know, to try to persuade the twin fairies to get Mothra to come fight Godzilla. And at first it's not working, but when a little more persuasion, after a little more uh, persuasion, they finally get Mothra to go fight Godzilla. But... Unfortunately, if she goes, she's not going to have enough energy to go back to Infant Island. So this is basically going to be Mothra's last stand. So then we cut to a scene where um, Mr. Kumiyama and Mr. Torahata are in a hotel room and they're fighting each other because Mr. Kumiyama is not getting enough money. So they fight each other and Mr. Kumiyama dies. But Godzilla is heading for that building anyway. So Mr. Torahata dies as well when Godzilla destroys that building. So then Godzilla is heading for the egg. And just as he's about to destroy the egg, Mothra shows up and they battle it out. So Mothra is using, um, she's using her wings to create strong winds. She's dr taking Godzilla's tail and she's dragging him across the land. And she's using a poison pollen. And the poison pollen is Mothra's weapon of last resort. That means, you know, if she uses it, she's going to die. But then Godzilla uses his atomic breath and that mortally wounds Mothra. So she flies over to Mothra, to her egg, and she dies. But two larvae hatch out of the egg and they fight Godzilla. So what they do is the Mothra larvae, you know, they use their web, you know, they, sh they shoot webs out of their mouth and they, they're webbing up Godzilla and Godzilla eventually, you know, falls off a cliff. And then the Mothra larvae, you know, they head home and then the movie ends. So yeah, I actually do really like this movie. You know, I see why Rich Iso and Leslie Chambers, these are your favorite Godzilla. This is your favorite Godzilla movie. I see why you guys like this movie. I do too. You know, I really like this movie. You know, but part of that I don't get is how the Mothra larva basically, you know, two little turds, you know, the Mothra larva just basically took out Godzilla just using webbing. You know, I don't get that, but no, but that's just a nitpick. I do really like this movie. I know some people out there don't. Even though I'm more of a Heisei fan than the Showa era, I actually like this Mothra movie better than the, than the Mothra movie in the Heisei era. But yeah, I really do like this movie. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Yeah, definitely check it out. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.